Hello? Never sure if this damn thing still works. Hello? No cash, no problem. Dim alien, dim problem, the notice says. It's a miracle this telephone box, endangered species that it is, still accepts something as ancient as coins. Hello? Ghosts of the West breathe over the hill's shoulder, through the broken window, down my neck. Door won't shut for nettles, stinks of stale animal, broken glass. Boots left on the floor, size 12s, poachers, traceable soles, rough as a brace of badgers. He will be back for these today. It's the 12th of December, 2012. The 12th day of the 12th month of the 12th year. He'll definitely be back for that. It was just after breakfast that an ancient Daihatsu four track, quad bike, two dogs and a hundred sheep went down that way. Beeping, shouting, revving, bleating, dogs snapping them out of the ditch. Quiet now. Looking over high pastures hedged to the sky, across the valley, Curlew makes his own fretting call. Time is stuck in a snail skid. Weather is coming black enough to undo this bone-buttoned land. Quiet and still. Stillness covers these hills like hide nailed to a chapel door. Clue in our God. That's what the signpost says. This way, that way, ridgeways trod by hunters. Fighters, farmers, drovers, peddlers, pilgrims, travellers, tourists. All cross here. This wayfaring is a meeting of different ways. A way in, a way out. A way of life, a way of the world. When ways cross, it's like jump leads attached to the battery of this land. They throw a spark. Different times, different ways, same place. Sluin Ogod, a remote crossroads in the Shropshire hills of the Welsh marches with a dilapidated red phone box and an ancient chapel with a graveyard surrounded by a parish of names from a language which goes back and forth across the English-Welsh border like a fiddler's elbow. Now doddery old names from a lost map. Not much, you might say. But names still mean something here. Who we are and where we're from, we take those names to the grave. Matthew Davis, Adam, Adam Harford Jones, Jones Gwyford Hall, Peter Parsons, Janice, Janice Silverton, Lower Bruin, Dad and Mom, Dad and Mom Peck, Trireddin, Mary, Christopher Mary, Fellows, Trireddin Cottage, Mary, beloved wife of Richard Fellows, Like this phone box, the chapel takes its name from Thluin Ogod, but between you and me, the locals have always tried to hide its older name, which on the English side means the Chapel of Skins. And like this phone box, the chapel is a receiver and a transmitter. It listens and speaks. 
It is connected to an ancient exchange of water and stone and blood and crackles of the sparks thrown by all those crossings of ways. In some lights, it's a symbol of civilization in these wild hills. In others, it looks darkly sinister. Under its yew trees, gravestones heave. Lean on bony elbows, taking one last look down the valley. Buzzards fly from Rossfiddle Bog to Clun Castle Keep and see it all. Here comes Anchor. His old Morris delivery van coughing over the hill from 1960. Peddling lingerie. And himself all cock robbing, pumped up with lust for Mrs. Beguildy. A sweet, neglected rose that'll be the death of him. Quick! A shadow from 1686 slinks through a gap in the hedge. That's Quabs. Gingerly fox like, with a cunning they used to call witchcraft grieving for her young poacher hung for trying to rescue her from the evil clutches of his lordship of the time who still pursues her across the centuries to this very day she's a vagrant wraith on the run from the 17th century but here in the 21st there's trebrodia from off a posh widow school marmish children flown Retired now, but still watching over this valley with the owl-like indignation of a matriarchal busybody alone with her own spite. All of them swept up in these hills' belongings, none of them up to any good. If only the postmark dead could spin with the buzzards high above these goings-on once more round again like a needle stuck in the groove of an old gramophone record. Once more then let go, fall back to earth and stillness. But the dead have nowhere else to be, well, perhaps not all of them. There's no letting go of who you are and where you're from inside the chapel. Each family has a pew stall, wow. penned in like sheep and painted with their place name on the door in case they stray. Graham, are we free as birds now, perched in the dark at the back of the church on a Wednesday morning? Ah, oh. <laughs> do you remember that ridiculous fancy dress party at Cock and Grange all those years ago? He was Squirrel Nutkin, I went as Wise Owl and everyone laughed. <laughs> you said I looked rather ominous. Well, I've finally grown into the part. Not wise at all, but rather dotty and disappointed. A bringer of bad luck. Oh, my knees. Oh. After a lifetime's running around after you and the children, I'm not kneeling on those smelly little hassocks stuffed with bracken or whatever. It's absurd, I know. Thirty-five years and I still can't sit in a pew with a name on it. No Facebook messages from Jenny and Ted this week. I don't see them coming back now. Why did you have to be buried in Oxford, Graham? I'll still do the flowers. Shine the brass, keeping busy. Look, Mahonia, Hellebores, even some late pink or bonica roses. Odd but cheery, all from our garden. And look, Graham, Hymn number 266, Thou whose almighty word chaos and darkness heard. <laughs> I only hear darkness, it's not chaos. It's organised, intentional, deliberate. 
Let there be light, but there's dark rainwater pouring out of the ground. Ravens. Even here, darkness covers everything like skin. <gasps> Listen. What's that? Come on, come on, Mrs. Begarvey. You know it's me on a Wednesday. And I know you're getting dressed up like a big old chimney breast or mantelpiece and smolder in Ingle Nook in a peekaboo nighty. Stump cig out behind the geranium so his nibs won't be suspicious. Are you lonesome tonight? And where is Squire Begaldy? Wednesdays he's at market in night and not back till tomorrow. Muckier than his pigs he is. But Mrs. when she's finished powdering and perfuming and getting all pink, she's the rose of these hills. Used to dream about skirts like you when I was at sea for months on end. Anchor, where I'm from, fitted well in the Navy. Now I'm back. Gold tooth tattoo on van. I can take me pick of roses in these lonely hills. Ooh, she's coming down the stairs, along the hall. I'm delivering three rolls of peppermint chiffon and half a mile of knicker elastic, but that's not all I'm gonna give her. Here you come. Come on, saucy Sue, open the ruddy door. Oh, damn their eyes! Ply quads with drink till it cries itself to sleep, then creep up on her bracken bed and lock her in the chicken shed! Oh, thought to get money on my warrant, them. Sell quabs to his lordship's men. But I got this spike hammered from a gibbet nail. Opens the lock to any jail. My John Black Mountain give it to me. And so without it hung was he. All oh, such clean livered folk them are. Singing hymns and knelt in prayer. Tis not God's might as makes them scared, but his lordship's law, when he declares all with the old ways are flayed for witchery, all poaching game will hang for felony. His lordship rules this land alone, takes by right my flesh and bone. But Quabs' gift frees from his horror. John Black Mountain defends my honour. But even for what that man done to me, no court in his lordship's fee would ever set a poacher free. His only reward would be the noose. But Quabs, <laughs> Quabs is still on the loose and too canny to be trapped by locks. Her has more cunning than the fox. And so Quabs picks the lock, which trapped her in the past and trots off into the morning rain of the twelfth day, of the twelfth month of the twelfth year of our century, heading inexorably for the Chapel of Skins. Rain, spitting through the broken window, pouring over a mouldy old phone box in the back of beyond, Ooze and dribble, ditch and spring, Kazi plank across Kumik and brook, everything not nailed down flows away. Water to the river, lambs to the abattoir, children to the towns, even the dead nailed to their names are gone to earth. Take it from one who knows, there are those who can't leave, stuck in their ways, ways winding over hilltops and down valleys, but bound to lead back to Thuinogod and the Chapel of Skins. For them, the ways are a constant returning. They have become stories of events so powerful, they are fixed here, to be told and retold, lived and relived forever. Stories take different shapes and different characters as the years change, but they will keep being told until the time comes. Owl in the tree hole, cock robin at the window, vixen in the hen house.
By the end of today, the time will come, and he who has no name now but Luinogod, the place itself, will return to sort out this little menagerie of stories for the final time on the twelfth bell of the twelfth day of the twelfth month of the twelfth year. Time will run out if I don't put more money in. Why does poor Quabs haunt the roads day and night? Is there injustice she once brought to light? Why does his lordship hunt her through time? What is her punishment? What is her crime? Ah, oh, father. Quabs and John Black Mountain was orphans. Lived the old ways, bold ways. Take game from common land, tell common fools fortune. Brew tonics for dreams and potions for love. Never did no harm. His lordship said we swirling, put a bounty on our sets. When he trapped Quabs in his old hall at Plasflirt and forced himself upon her, John Black Mountain came to rescue her, but his lordship's men catched him and dragged him off to be strung up. Locked Quabs in the cellar, but her escaped. If his lordship captures Quabs, he'll skin her alive. Being free is a revenge. Time without end. Amen. Why does poor Quabs haunt the roads day and night? She keeps her witcheries hidden from sight. But he who pursues her lays claim to this gift. The guile to see and the art to shift. The old craft brought Quabs to a crossing of ways. His lordship gives chase to the end of her days. What am I doing here, Mrs. Beguildy? You said wait. Meet away from prying eyes, so you got me traipsing around the hills. Sheep shit on my new brothel creepers. Too wet for rocking and rolling in the grass. But we will lie in sin. Good girl in the small ear. Ow! In the haunted house at Plasfleur. Empty these many years, with only the moon to care about wrong or right. And we will love as free as ruddy birds, Saucy Sue. I know it's a bit dark, talking to a mud mobile. But the light's comforting. You never know who's about. But do you remember our rambles when Jenny and Ted were little, with old Bren, collecting nature table things, rose hips, toadstools, and owl pellets, picking out disgusting mouse bones and bits of beetles? Sometimes I feel so choked, like coughing up one of those pellets full of my regrets and the pathetic remains of hopes and dreams. What am I doing here? Who's about? With only the moon to care about. The light's comforting. It's an injustice she once Violet brought to us. But we will lie in sin. She keeps her witcheries hidden from sight. In the haunted house of Plasfleur. Gusting house bones. Bits of beetles. As free as ruddy birds. Like a crow tied by a string to the Thunogod signpost. These stories flap round and round the circles of names in their telling. Will Trebodia find peace? Will Quabs find freedom? Will Anchor get his comeuppance? In the chapel, old prayers scuttle into the named darkness of the pew stalls. Water flows under flagstones. The shale below settles like the breath of a sleeping horse. Lift up thine eyes unto the hills, and there is only sky, and clouds, and summer swifts, and winter plovers, and rain spilling into the soft green lap of the valley. To this quiet place the unquiet come. But first they have to fall from time into darker ways. I 
come delivering. Shamur, Shamil and Chiffon, Nylon, Rayon and Polyester. But this week I feel like a lubber in this spooky old mansion at Place Fleur. You promised me black lace on scarlet satin, but life's not all lingerie and carnal knowledge, is it, Saucy Sue? Come away with me, why don't you? I got the van and a week's takings. We could be walking up the gangway of a ship bound for Australia before his nibs raises the alarm. Come away with me, Mrs. Begaldi. There'll be no more skulking round haunted houses in our underwear. No more hiding in the darkness, scared out of our skin. I hear someone outside. Who is it? This is Anchor in here. You get me riled, I'll give you a really good idea. I've got a bicycle chain. Quabs knows this house. Plus flirt. Quabs smells the hurt. This house stinks worse than vermin. Hides its sin and bad deeds done to urchins such as Quabs within. Here, my John Black Mountain came to rescue me. He clapped in irons, but Quabs ran free. No hedge will snag me in its thorn. No dungeon hold a soul freeborn. No lord and master with all his men can rule the common lands belonging to the common fool. So now, his lordship must catch me before I'm saved. Before I'm as proper as any in them graves. So I can tell God and on judgment day complain what his lordship done to me and John Black Mountain. Hush. Someone else comes near. Pretty name, Plas Flood. What a creepy old place. People come, do it up, but don't stay long. Locals say it's haunted. Ha <laughs> ha, tosh. Remember when we looked it over, Graham? You were going to bite for your mum, but you said it smelt weird. I know you resented me for not wanting her to live with us. Vile old Harridan. <laughs> Shh, it's empty. Won't hurt to peep through the window. Who's there? I know someone's there. You don't frighten me. Where are you, saucy Sue, you big old fat bird in fancy knickers? I'm getting vexed. You won't turn up and there's someone creeping round. Calm down. It's just a fox. Light a coffin now. Graham? I see someone with his back to me looking out of the kitchen window. He lights a cigarette. Black hair and sideboards like one of those teddy boys from the fifties. Catch a falling star and put it in your pocket. Never let it fade away. I have such a longing for you, Mrs. Beguildy. You really boil my cabbage. I can't imagine he owns this place. I must tell the parish council. We don't want any of those awful traveller types setting up camp here. <gasps> Make me jump, stupid owl. Hang on. I eat those ruddy things. Unlucky, my nan always says. Corpse birds, when they hoot outside the window, mean someone's going to die. This is bizarre. The man is flickering. His image breaking up and now he's turning. Don't breathe. I'll give you half an hour, Mrs. Begaldi, then I am getting out of this dump. Quabs peeps through the keyhole at the future to see some terrible thing happen to travellers such as she. Cock Robin, under his lordship's roof, trapped but cannot flee. Owl hoots the terrible truth, but deaf to it is he. Fox, bright of eye and red of tooth, a mischief she do smell. All sport for his lordship's proof in whose law we do dwell. Damn it all, Mrs. B. I'm not waiting all ruddy day. If you don't come by the time I count a hundred, I'll have to take steps. Step one. You find a girl to love. 86, 87, 88, 89. Who the hell's that? Begaldi. So it's you creeping around outside. 
trying to pluck up courage to take me on, eh? You might be the big I am in the pubs round here. You can't lord it over me, Squire Beguildy. Your missus don't love you. She loves me, Anchor. We're going away together. There ain't nothing you can do about it. Why don't you put that ruddy shotgun down before you hurt yourself? And fight me man to man, fair and square. Or else sling your hook and let bygones be... No, don't be stupid. Begaldi! You'll hang for this! No! Did you hear that, Graham? Shall I call the police? Oh, for goodness sake, I'm not staying here. Who killed Cock Robin? I says the sparrow with my little bow and arrow. The fly saw him die. A beetle with a needle sewed his shroud. The owl with a trowel dug his grave. The person rook read his little book. The lark was the clerk. The linnet in a minute carried the link. The dove mourned for love. The kite not at night carried the coffin. Wren, cock and hen bore the pal. The thrush in the bush sang the psalm. The bull who could pull rang the bell. And all the birds of all the air fell a sobbing for poor cock robin. They were not the sparrow's arrow, but his lordship killed cock robin, says Quabs. <laughs> Hello? You still there? Hello? A <laughs> sharp little storm. I thought the devil had pushed this old phone box over the hill. Valley roads are flooded, landslides and broken branches mean none of the ways to the crossing are passable. Fluinogod is remote again. The storm is calming now, but I see the boots have gone. I knew he'd be back for them, so he must be out with the hunt. Who in Fluinogod is hunted by Fluinogod? I can just make out someone hurrying down the lane to the chapel. It looks like Mrs. Busybody Trebodia from off. She's gone through the gate. She's sheltering under a yew tree, standing on a flat stone which marks the spot where they say a murdered peddler is buried. Oh, oh, oh I feel safer here at the chapel. The yew tree smells as fresh as disinfectant. Oh. Do you remember how beautiful this place can be, Graham? But then you wouldn't with your head stuck in those stupid books. What good did they do you? Or Jenny and Ted? You just encouraged them to get away as soon as they could. You know, I'm sure it's all my fault, pushy mother. But they're such spoiled and grateful. Oh, I must be a little light-headed, all that polishing and flower arranging. But I can't leave it to Mrs. Ghastly give it all. That old scavenger, Mrs. Barkett, fall. What's that? Ruddy van won't ruddy start. Oh, Mrs. Picardy, I'm all of a muck sweat. Taking a beating. Cool off like a boxer in his corner. Gets so dark and lonely out here. Say you'll be mine. And nothing will keep us apart. While Anchor whistles in the shadows and Trebrodia broods in the graveyard, a vagrant finds a hole in Fluinogod and slips through it from one century into another. But there may be no escape from the vengeful power which pursues her. She runs for her life towards the Chapel of Skins and closer to midnight on the twelfth day of the twelfth month of the twelfth year. Quabs has got to go to ground. His lordship follows with horse and hound. And if by chance he catches me, he'll string Quabs from the rowan tree. <laughs> out of the dark hill come the hounds of an owl and the thundering horses and riders of the wild hunt. Turn your face away! Turn your face away now! <laughs> the 
the dogs won't find out where I went. This brook won't give up Quabs' scent. I follow water to its holy fountain. Run with the strength of John Black Mountain! I fear the ending time begins. Will this water wash my sins? This font of the chapel of skins. Since ancient times are holy place, but for quabs to find a state of grace, some soul must pardon my disgrace. Protect me from his lordship's ire. And lead me through salvation's fire. Oh, goodness, Graham, you'll never believe it. I was tidying dead flowers from the grave and I saw something. It was a fox, Graham, a beautiful red fox. And the next thing I knew, there were four by fours. Well, I knew they were after it, so I unlocked the chapel door and stood back. The fox gave me a glance and bolted inside. So I locked the door and I put the key in my pocket. Well, these oiks came charging over, demanding to know if I'd seen a fox. Well, I denied it, of course. I told them off for not showing respect in God's acre. I can't remember exactly. I was so put out. I don't know what came over me, Graham. It's a shrill northeasterly, a lazy wind, cutting through the toughest corners of this land like a hook through hazel, hauling winter's exile in to set up camp in these hills again. Ravens rag across the treetops, shouting into the void. Grass is silver-plated with frost, and the song of running water from the chapel's holy well has bite. To this remoteness, something is coming. All evening, the owl mithered from ash trees above Trebrodia, telling her old story of Mariticide. At the Chapel of Skins, Cock Robin lay still under the yew tree, and the vixen curled in sleep behind the altar. In Thluinogod, this is the end of times and the beginning of times. Midnight will soon be on us. Twelfth day, twelfth month, twelfth year, and soon it will be time for the twelfth bell. No cash, no problem. Dim Arian, dim problem, the notice says. I better put some more money in this thing. I thank my gift that Quaps is free and given precious sanctuary. As if the curse of being vermin lifts from me. John Black Mountain. Soon our two souls shall unite and walk from darkness into light. It's been awful, Graham. That business with the fox. Oh, I can't sleep. I'm going to let it out. Loud. I actually felt frightened, Graham. I probably should have ignored the fox, but it's a strange thing. I really felt something, that being true to myself, doing something right. I am not going to be intimidated. I'm going back to the chapel. The children blame me for pushing them away and nagging you to death, Graham. The strong should protect the weak. The meek shall inherit the earth. Taking away the fox's freedom saved its life. Did you see? There's one who's come back to Thluin Ogod. Back to his land. Back to claim what's owed him. He's been called many names on either side the border. On the English side, he was Wild Edric. On the Welsh side, Gwyn Apnoth. Both were the huntsmen of an own, the underworld. He's been called by the names of a string of megalomaniacal martial lords and despotic squires. But now, We'll just have to call him he who came back for his boots. And on the 12th of the 12th of the 12th, we'll call him by the name of his own place. Lewin Ogod. Oh, Graham, this road doesn't get any easier. I've bought a tin of dog food. Folks must be starving. 
Yeah, I know, I know, I know. It's a stupid fantasy. But it is a connection with a wild creature, and perhaps I... Oh, I hate the darkness, Graham. What's that noise? <laughs> He who came back for his boots stands at the crossing bearing his name. The black sky is wild with black birds stirred out of their roosts. Ravens, crows, rooks and jackdaws scattered along the wind like charred pages of a burnt book. He has come for the service of the Twelfth Bell. Oh, damn her trick! Woman with an owl face, quick to click the lock on quabs as if a sanctuary, but means to sell me to his lordship's men. But I shall escape again. I got this spike hammered from a gibbet nail. Opens the lock to any jail. My John Black Mountain gave it me. So without it hung, was he. Now his lordship rides after me. And no court in his lordship's fee will ever set us bare free. Clubs feels her old craft fade through these stones that time has laid. All sacred waters to ride through mud to receive another's blood. My own reward will be the knife. But Quabs is holding fast to life and too canny to be trapped by locks. Her as more cunning than the fox. The chapel door opens ajar, just enough for the one inside to sense the one without. The door closes and the wind howls through the bell tower, the yew trees, the leaning stones and out over the hill. Hello, Foxy. Look, look, look. Come on, food, food. <laughs> oh, full of vitamins and minerals for a glossy coat and healthy teeth. Didn't do smelly old bread much good, quite frankly, but I expect you've eaten what? <laughs> Come on. No, I'm not completely loopy yet, Graham. I'm talking to the fox, oh, wherever it is. Where are you? Oh, a bird. I'll get the pole. Oh, come on, come on, Mrs. Begoldy. You know it's me rattling your hormones. I hope you're getting dressed up like Jane Mansfield, but I expect you look more like Massey Ferguson, all bounce and smoke and running hot like a tractor in a negligee. Just get the quiff right. Stub sig out behind the geraniums, so his nibs won't be suspicious. Sweet, sweet, the memories you gave of me, you can't beat the memories you gave of me. You take one fresh in. And how Squire Beguildy, is he still at night with his pigs and the other swine he drinks with? Why does that mock him, leave you on your lonesome powdering and perfuming and getting all pink to be Anchor's wild rose of the hills? I used to dream about skirts like you when I was in the Navy, Mrs. Bigoli. Real women. Real naughty seaside postcard women. She's coming down the stairs, along the hall. I'm delivering two rolls of black bordello lace and half an acre of Fiesta Scarlet Satin. And if she runs that up into something barely legal, that's not all I'm gonna give her. Here she comes. Come on, saucy Sue, open the ruddy door. And so the stories of lost loves run again. Of Cock Robin and his faithless hen. Of the vixen's flight from the huntsman of the owl's exile in loneliness. But the telling of these stories is running out of time, like I'm running out of money. It's very dark. If I could be somewhere else, I would. 
Who can see there's no crossing in Llywinogog now, but a swirling of winds and branches, hooves and wings? Who can see inside the locked chapel of skins, into the free pew stall at the back? Not it off. Graham, I... I... Don't... Chapel's full. Singing. Damn, Bill. Who are these people? No, Janice Silver to Noah Brewer and Sarah Barrington, the driver at Thomas Meadows Castle Pickwick, all died years ago. There's no service scheduled tonight. I typed the rotor myself. Oh. oh, Jenny and Ted are sitting in the front pew. Hello? Hello? Why can't they hear me? Why can't they see me? We cross our own ways. Here and now. For the last time. We cross, we cross our own ways. ways. Here and now. Here and now. For the last time. Last time. It's a funeral, Graham. Oh, Graham. I'm so pleased you are. Hold my hand. This moment we are Earth's darkest place. The chapel door swings open and the gale blows into the congregation of the postmark dead, followed by he who came back for his boots. Thuinogod holds his fixen by the tail. He skins her on the altar, nails her pelt to the chapel door and walks off into the hill. The Chapel of Skins, Trebodia was played by Liza Sadovy, Anka by Ben Crow, Quabs by Alex Tregear, and the caller in the phone box was Paul Evans. The wildlife sound recordist was Chris Watson, and The Chapel of Skins was produced in Bristol by Sarah Blunt of the BBC Natural History Unit. <laughs>